Well, hello. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about celebrating diversity and the importance of celebrating diversity and what that's meant to me in my life and maybe what you could take away from that and, and influence in your life. I was adopted when I was nine weeks old. I was actually born in Texas. Nine weeks after that, I've moved here and I lived here my entire life. I graduated from high school here and I went on to graduate from college in this area as well. But in my immediate family, there was a lot of diversity. I have a younger brother who's two years younger than I am, who's my parents' biological child. And then I also have a younger sister, two years younger than him, who is also adopted from Texas, although my sister and I are not biologically related. So in my immediate family, there was a lot of diversity growing up. In addition to that, my mom also had a daycare at our house when I was younger. And at one point, the ages of the kids were five, four, three, two, and one. And of those kids, there was five children from five different nations. Of those five children from five different nations, three of them practiced three different religions. So there was a lot of diversity in my household and in my immediate family, both physical differences and difference of religion and opinion. So when I got to my first day of preschool, and I was the only person with darker skin in my class, I was a little bit confused because I grew up with so much diversity, and it was such a big part of my life. I always tell my mom, I think that's probably why I'm not a picky eater, because I remember having so many different ethnic cuisines for dinner every single night going home from school. And then I got to hot lunch, and we had hot dogs and hamburgers every day. <laughs> so I grew up around a lot of diversity, but I found that it was really easy for me to find a common bond and easy connector with people. Then I could start building from there to overcome any maybe physical difference that we had. My mom's a big music lover, and she only let me listen to classical music when I was growing up. So I listened to more Mozart symphonies and more Bach and Beethoven and Brahms and Kavaleski before the time I was five than most people probably listened to in their entire lives. And every day when I would be finished eating my lunch in my high chair, my mom would push me up to the piano in our house and turn on Sesame Street and just hope and pray that maybe in that hour that I was sitting next to the piano that I would take some interest in it or maybe be inspired to want to play. Well, she did this every single day for years. But I played piano like a typical one-year-old at that point with my elbows in my hands. <laughs> but she didn't give up. She kept doing it over and over and over. And one day, we followed this regular routine, finished my lunch. She cleaned me up, pushed me up to the piano, turned on Sesame Street. And you know the theme song for Sesame Street, if you ever have watched it before? Can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street, that one. I started to play along with the theme song. I was about two years old when this happened. So my mom knew that I liked music, and her plan had worked. <laughs> <laughs> so from then on, I went on and I took as many lessons as I could. I tried to be as involved in music and theater, and it was just my easy connector with people. I went on and I took lessons not only in classical and jazz piano, but I took guitar lessons. I took cello lessons, clarinet, and even a little bit of accordion, as Cody mentioned earlier. So there was a lot of ways that I could connect with people through music, because it was such an easy connector with, for me. I want to share with you a few songs that kind of are a wide range of different styles of music. And some songs maybe you'll know, and maybe, it'll be, maybe some songs will be songs you've never heard before. theme song from Mario Brothers. Now that's a song that I know because I played a lot of Mario in my day, but it's not a song that I play and listen to on repeat on my iPod. It's just kind of one of those songs that's maybe in our music memory that we don't have to think too hard about what it is. Here's another one I think you'll know. Star Wars, right, another song you didn't have to think too hard about. What about this one? It's only two notes, so. <laughs> you know that one? Jaws, right. So there's a few songs that are probably just in our music memory. We don't have to think too hard about what they are, what they're from, from movie soundtracks, from video games. 
But then there's other songs that maybe we've heard before, who have been influenced in our life on a commercial or maybe a background music, but maybe we don't even know who the composer is. A song like this. by Beethoven. So that's a classical piece. Uh, definitely has a lot of influence in the music that we listen to today, more pop music, whether we realize it or not. This next song is a song that I think a lot of you will know. Uh, it's a song called Let It Be by the Beatles. When I find myself in times of trouble, mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. This one, this has more of a jazz influence, although it's more contemporary. <laughs> Jones, thank you. That's a song by Nora Jones. It's called Don't Know Why. And she definitely has more of a jazz influence in her style of writing and composing. Uh, the last song that I have to play for you is one of my absolute favorite songs to play. And I think that you'll recognize it. Linus and Lucy by Vince Guaraldi, Guaraldi Trio, and that's a song that is used in all of the Charlie Brown holiday specials, which you've maybe heard before. So in playing all these different kinds of songs, these different styles of music, they all have different faces because they're all so different from one another. There are definitely influences from each era to the next as far as music goes, but each song is so entirely different. Just like you and I are really entirely different. And we each have a very different and diverse story to tell. And it's a story that makes up our life. I like to call it my diversity story. My diversity story is very unique. And one that maybe if people saw me, they wouldn't know that I really, really loved Kuchen and German food and I play the accordion. They might think that right away, but maybe they wouldn't. So I like to share my story with people and learn about theirs as well. In talking about diversity, though, a lot of people think that that problem of celebrating diversity is solved. We already celebrate diversity all the time, and everybody is always really accept, accept, accepting excuse me, 
and respectful of the differences that we have. And I would disagree because I think there's always room for improvement. Even in a recent study in the last couple of weeks with our recent election, there's been a lot of racist tweets aimed at our president. And the area that had the most racist tweets was actually here, per capita, in North Dakota. And a personal story I'd like to share with you. I was at a wedding of a good friend this summer. And I knew the bride quite well and had met the groom, but didn't know all of the groom's extended friends and guests that would be at, at the wedding. And, you know, if you've ever been to a wedding, which I'm sure you all have, a wedding is a long day. You meet a lot of people throughout the day from both sides, the bride's and the groom's families. And there was one person on the groom's side whom I'd never met, had just seen at this wedding earlier that day, and I could tell he was a little standoffish towards me, but then again, there's a lot of people that you meet. I didn't know him before this. And at one point, we were in a group of about six people just kind of making light conversation. Where did you go to school? What did you major in? What are you doing now? That sort of thing. And he walked right up to me from across the circle and said, you need to realize your place as a non-white. And I thought I didn't hear him. And I said, excuse me? And he said, you need to realize your place as a non-white. And he walked away. So this was in July. Unfortunately, there are still people who don't understand that we should be celebrating our differences and what makes us so unique and so special. Fortunately, I have good friends that in that moment were not ready to accept that he just walked away from the conversation. Not only did it upset the bride and the groom on their special day, but it, accepted, it really, really impacted the bride and groom's family, everyone else involved who was there at the wedding, and they took it upon themselves to approach this man and tell him that he was in the wrong to say that, and just wondering where that comment even came from, and disturbed that that's what he thought. They gave me the opportunity, too, to talk to him if I wanted to, and this is all I said. I said, you should be ashamed of yourself because you should know better, because you're being so disrespectful, and you're the one missing out. So I would encourage you, although we all, I'm sure, celebrate diversity in our own way, I would encourage you to go above and beyond that, to be more informed about people who are different than you to share your story as your diversity story is different from the person sitting next to you. And continue to learn about other people, other cultures, other religions, people's backgrounds. Maybe it's people who've lived in Fargo their whole lives. Maybe it's people who just moved to the Fargo area from a different part of our state. Maybe it's from a different part of the nation. Maybe it's from a different country. If we continue to learn and to grow in that way, will truly be able to celebrate diversity and continue to build on those bonds that we can create. My easy connector is music. Find your easy connector and build from there. Thank you.